For what it's worth, I'm not suggesting that any temple in North America goes vegan. Um, just as a, throw that out there as a preamble. Um, there's a, a huge amount of information from Srila Prabhupada about what he wanted ISKCON to do vis-a-vis -vis cow protection. And so what I want to do as a service for all of you Vaishnavas is present that information in a crystallized form as something of like a, almost like a flow chart. So it's going to be real quote based. There's a lot of quotes to get through. I put headers at the top of each quote attempting to distill the essence. And we're going to move through them quickly and then we can have a discussion. And in, in many ways we're modeling this presentation after what was done at the European leaders meeting uh, just last year. Okay, so this is a conversation probably I have with Hari Sari. Prabhupada was asking about a street hawker. And Prabhupada says he was selling a book on cow protection. This was during Prabhupada's childhood. And, uh, and he said, so some old man said, you're selling a book on cow protection? And Prabhupada said, why are you selling that? You should just give the book to your mother because your mother must need the book because only an incredibly stupid person would not know how to protect a cow. So there must have been something wrong with your childhood that you would have the idea that you needed to write a book on cow protection because obviously everybody knows how to protect cows. You follow? It gives you some kind of a sense of <laughs> how ingrained and standard and normal Prabhupada felt it was for a society to protect cows that the production of a book on cow protection was like almost like a book on how to, you know, open your eyes or how to breathe. So, Prabhupada made many, many statements about milk. And I, I had 50 or 100 of them put together, but I knew that wouldn't work. So, you can care, you can put Prabhupada's statements, you can taxonomize them into statements about how milk is important for a healthy body. He says, it'll cure your diseased children if you drink milk. It'll make your body healthy and strong. You can't do anything without drinking milk. This is Prabhupada's idea. Then the same thing about the mind. It gives you a fine mind, not like a pig's brain, but a real brain, a human brain. Over and over again, he spoke about for the body, for the mind. But then, amazingly, as Prabhupada can be sometimes quite impassioned in his speech, Prabhupada spoke about milk being required for self-realization. It's essential for developing the finer tissues of the human brain so you can understand the intricacies of transcendental knowledge. That's a heavy statement. Because it means that drinking milk is essential for transcendental knowledge. It prolongs your life, develops your brain, so you can execute devotional service and ultimately attain the favor of the Supreme Personality of God. That one's even heavier. <laughs> it's the principle of religion in a liquid form. You can stop now. Without it, there's no civilization. <clears throat> Sorry. Without it, there's no civilization. Principles of religion are form. So, Prabhupada was very strong on the idea that we need to drink milk. Not only for physical health, not only for mental health, but also for our devotional service, attaining the favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and understanding transcendental knowledge. At one point he called it the most important food in the material world. It's the most important food in the material world. And he says milk means cow's milk. He did give a little caveat that you could drink goat's milk. He said cow's milk was the best, but he did say you could drink goat's milk. I found a place where he said that. As strange as that might sound. Um, so now we're left thinking about where do we get our milk from? We should avoid adulterated and suspicious things. Of course, that's, that's good advice generally. <laughs> but this was specifically made in reference to milk, which will come clear in a moment. When we know something is adulterated, we should avoid it. If you purchase it unknowingly, that's not your fault. But things which are suspicious should be avoided. And this gets a little dicey because the milk we get now oftentimes is contaminated. And I'm assuming that we're not 
unknowingly purchasing that. Cod liver oil was a big thing. And so oftentimes milk that's produced, especially milk you would buy at a supermarket, has adulterants added into it automatically. That's standard. And so here we're given an injunction in relationship to getting our milk, and that'll become clear later too, that we should avoid things which are suspicious. Now let's say we find milk that's not adulterated. Let's say we find milk that's pure. We have another problem, and that's that you can't take service without becoming indebted. If you don't pay the bill, you have to suffer. They're so ungrateful. They take milk from the cow. When it's not supplied anymore, all right, send it to the slaughterhouse. Once you take milk, you're indebted. So there's a symbiotic relationship created between mankind and animals. And Prabhupada, he gets a little stronger in his language too. Because we're drinking milk, we are indebted. But instead of paying our indebtedness, we're killing. We are creating reactions. The whole world is engaged in this. The whole world is engaged in this sinful activity. That, that broadens the scope of who's implicated. You follow? That's a very heavy point. It broadens the scope of who's implicated. Because not everybody in the material world is killing cows after they milk them. And so there's a joint or collective karma, very similar to what you see in the Manu Samhita about the different people who are involved in permitting the animal to be killed, selling it, transporting it. And so by buying milk, now just, by the way, we can just, I don't know if you guys know this or not, so we'll just make a brief statement about this. Every cow in North America that's raised for milk is killed around the age of five or six years old. 25% of McDonald's, In-N-Out, Burger King, 25% of fast food hamburgers are old milk cows. 15% of a dairy's income comes from slaughtering cows. When you learn about dairy, if you go to cows and you see Davis, you study the best dairy school in the country, and you study dairy, 15% of your money comes from killing cows. All the bulls are killed. All the male children of those cows, which are impregnated every year, they're all killed. All the female cows are milked, and after five years, instead of 20, they're sold to slaughterhouses, and they're hamburgers at fast food restaurants. Did you all know that? No. The milk and meat industry are one. <laughs> There's no distinction between them the same industry. It's subsidized, that's why you can buy milk for cheaper than you can buy good water at the, at the supermarket. You'll pay a couple of bucks for a quart of good water, you'll pay a couple of bucks for a gallon of milk. A couple of bucks for a quart of good water, a couple of dollars for a gallon of milk. So the milk and the meat industry, they're one, more so than ever before. And the whole world's engaged in that. And that's a problem. Because we're going to have to suffer for it. And it means there's going to be no peace or prosperity in society. And there's periodically great war and wholesale massacre because of this. It's just, if you can think about the heaviness of that statement from Prabhupada. He's saying that world wars and massacre and pestilence and suffering on a global scale is caused by mother killing civilization. Because they take the last drop and they send it to the slaughterhouse. And that's the game we're involved in by buying milk. There must be suffering because of this. It's the cause of all problems. Prabhupada wrote this before he came to the U.S. These greatly sinful acts are responsible for all the troubles in present society. So Prabhupada regularly and consistently from before he even came to the U.S. had this opinion. It's going to be the end of Western civilization. I, I, don't, I don't think it's humanly possible for Prabhupada to be more emphatic on this point. 
of the severity and the seriousness of killing cows which give milk. So we got a dilemma. On one hand, probably said we need to drink milk, but he simultaneously condemned his primary source, the commercial dairy industry, so where do we get our milk from? I just want to take a moment and just, just speak about this for a second. I, this idea of cow protection goes back to the Rig Veda. If you look at the old Vedic culture, what happened was it rained, and rain was because of Yajna, and rain was something which was, it was from the higher power was the result of rain. And whether that was Indra or Krishna and the Gita takes responsibility for rain, um, you've got this blessing from God which comes in the form of rain, and it grows grass, and grass is unusable by human beings, and then cows come along and they eat the grass. And magically, grass is transformed into milk. And you take the essence of milk, and you get cream. And you take the essence of cream, and you get butter. And the essence of butter becomes ghee. And you take that ghee, and you offer it as a repaying of that gift, as a reciprocation of that gift with God, who gave you the rain in the first place, into the fire with mantra. And that's how you create, that's how you create Rita. That's how you, you complete the cycle of life. Dharma in the old Vedic culture was called Rita. It was that you get something, you receive it, you're nourished by it, and then you give it back. That's what Krishna's speaking about in the third chapter of the Gita. When he talks about Yaksha, Yagya as the Ishtakama Dukta, and you nourish one another. So milk is the essence, ghee is the essence of God's gift to mankind, which makes life possible. And through Yagya we give that back, and water represented by the ghee is offered back in the fire, represented, uh, represented that primal element, with the medium of mantra, which is the air, and you're taking the essence of the universe and offering it back to your creator. And that's there in the Rig Veda. That's from the very beginning, and you see Prabhupada continuing through till today. So we've got a problem. Because kind of the essence of our yajna has been adulterated in such a way as to necessitate the end of Western civilization, war, pestilence, massacre, and inauspiciousness for the whole world. So what's this? The essence of our yagya is the holy name. Yes, the essence of our yagya is the holy name. That is true. Yes. Just as uh, my presentation's on cow protection, <coughs> So I'm going there, and just like the Goswami sometimes will say hearing is the most important thing, or chanting is the most important thing. So today, I'm saying cow protection is the most important thing. But I'd just like to offer a disclaimer, just in case any of you think I've stopped chanting, or I'm no longer a Vaishnava, or I've forgotten. I understand that chanting Hare Krishna is the most important thing, and that's of course why we call it Sankirtan Yadi. Hari Bol. So because of all this, we keep cows. When we know something's adulterated, we should avoid it. Remember that quote before? Remember that quote? When we know something's adulterated, we should avoid it? Here's the finish of that quote. It's for this reason that in our Vedic culture, the people used to keep a number of cows, and the milk was drawn out of them and was utilized for so many purposes. We keep cows, we take milk, we make yogurt, ghee, and we prepare so many things. Remember that quote about how devotional service comes from drinking milk and you can attain the favor of God? Here's that entire quote. The cow should be protected, milk should be drawn, and this milk should be prepared, and that's the milk you take that prolongs your life. So we have here an addition, that in addition to drinking milk, we have to drink milk in this way. <coughs> this is how the milk has to go. Cow protection means we can never kill the animals. So, of course, if you're going to protect cows, you can't hurt the cows. Protecting is like a positive state of existence. So you at least have to stop hurting cows. Then you can protect cows. So commercial dairy hurts cows. Therefore, commercial dairy is antithetical <coughs> to cow protection. And just in case there's any doubt about that, here we have it. 
We must not make any program for selling them the slaughterhouses. That is the way of cow protection. Cow protection is the basis of human civilization. Look at all those quotes. That's how many times Prophet said that. <coughs> it's necessary for preliminary worship of the Supreme Being. If you're anxious to cultivate the human spirit, then you have to turn your attention first towards cow protection. How heavy is that statement? How strong is Prabhupada's statement there? First thing you need to do. Sometimes we say hearing is more important than chanting, because you can't chant unless you heard. So here we have Prabhupada saying, if you want to cultivate the human spirit, the first thing you have to do is look at the question of cow protection. It will attract you to devotional service. It's the purpose of ISKCON. Cow protection is the purpose of ISKCON. Who said that? Prophet. Prophet said that. But he threw from culture in there as well. But cow protection is more important than caring for Brahmins. <laughs> yeah, in the Bhagavatam. In the Bhagavatam. Cow protection is more important than caring for Brahmins. Why? Because without cow protection, Brahminical culture can't be maintained. It's preliminary. You can't please Krishna without cow protection. Your society is not protected by Krishna if you don't protect cows. It's not human society either. Without cow protection, you can't realize the science of God, become spiritually advanced, all your welfare activities won't be successful. All your affairs administration will go to hell, and there's no question of a happier, peaceful life. I didn't put the quotes because I thought that read better all together, because I took the quotes out, but those are five separate places and I strung them all together. Contrastingly, if you protect cows, you'll please Krishna. It's Krishna's personal program. Krishna himself gives this instruction. And the last one, he personally did it. It's Krishna's order. We take it seriously, because Krishna's our authority. We must follow Krishna's instruction and example to protect cows that he taught us. The Bhagavatam also orders it. Lord Chaitanya instructs us to do it too. And therefore, it's ISKCON's program. It's not just our religion. It's for the benefit of society. It's not just for India. It's for everywhere and everyone. It's not meant only for the Indian climate, but for all human beings all over the universe. That's what Prabhupada said about cow protection. It's the most important business of human society. Look at all the places Prabhupada says that. At the very least, devotees need to protect cows. At least people in Krishna consciousness should follow in Krishna's footsteps and give all protection to the cows. At least we have to. I know it's a revolutionary idea, but it's Krishna's orders. That is Krishna's order. Actually, it's revolutionary to the modern age, but how is it possible we say otherwise? Research us to serve all of you. It just really affected me how emphatic, unequivocal, strong, deliberate, heavy Prabhupada is on this point. It's all over the place, it's everywhere. And when you string it together like that, it's like, you know, what, what do we gotta do? We gotta all go run out and buy a bunch of cows and start protecting them. So we have a situation. We 
need milk. It's our culture. We need milk. It's our culture. And our source of milk is intrinsically linked to the wholesale slaughter of billions of animals, which causes worldwide destruction, in Prabhupada's opinion. And he has a solution, and that's the way to protect cows. And it is a massively important subject for Prabhupada. He says it's the most important. He says it's the first thing. I'm just repeating what he said. We're about to embark on a new phase of our movement, our ashram. This is a conversation with Jagadish Das in 19, on January of 77. Our next program is Farms. Our next program will be to organize farming land to set an example of the whole world. If you're going to protect cows, then what do you need? You need farms. So cow protection requires farms. And we've got two things. We have the next phase of our movement, Varnashram. And we have the next phase of our movement, farms. So what do we do? Varnashram and farms are the same thing. On these farms, we can demonstrate the full Varnashram system. For Prabhupada, Varnashram and farms were the same thing. Of course, farms and cows are the same thing. Where there's agriculture, there must be cows. That's our mission. Cow protection and agriculture. Think about how heavy that statement is. That's our mission. That's ISKCON's mission. Cow protection and agriculture. Farms equal cows. And of course, the trends of logic, Varnashram equals farms, farm equal cows, and therefore Varnashram equals cows. And so Varnashram is centered around the cow. Protecting cows is the essence of Varnashram. Cow protection is a basic principle of our farms because agriculture and cows are God's gift to mankind. I wanted cow protection from the very beginning. In the beginning, when High Agreement purchased, I immediately gave him the idea of new Vrindavan cow protection. That's 67. And this brings something. I probably began speaking about Gitanagari in 56. We got new Vrindavan in 67. Prabhupada, almost immediately upon setting foot in the U.S., established ISKCON and wanted to start cow protection. He had this idea before he came to America, and he just like got off the boat and hit the ground running and established it almost immediately. And he's saying here, I wanted it from the very beginning. These farms are extremely important. Every temple needs a farm. Every temple needs a farm. Everywhere in each center, this system should be introduced. We can have hundreds of them in America. It'll please Krishna. It can produce intense love for Krishna. This is a really serious statement. Very crude, unsophisticated, but intense love for Krishna. That's Vrindavan. We want to introduce this farm project means intense love for Krishna. This civilization we want to introduce. And this is Prabhupada reaching a fever pitch in 1977. Most of these quotes about the farms and Varan Ashram are from 76 and 77. Prabhupada started really beating this drum strong right up until he left this world. These farms can make the world Krishna conscious. Again, in 77, August. Do it at any cost. That I want to introduce at any cost to it. May of 77. Farm, 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 farm. Don't bother about big buildings. It's not required. Useless waste of time. Produce to make the whole field green. He says the whole world will become Vrindavan. See that? I'm asking so much here. 
Farm, 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 farm. May of 77. It's Krishna's program. It's not my program. It's Krishna's program. Produce greenness everywhere. Krishna's a farmacharya. <laughs> August of 77. Krishna and Balaram represent cow farms and cow protection. Krishna herds cows, Balaram carries a plow. Krishna Gorash, Krishna Balaram. The two brothers represent Krishna and Goraksha. We won't become losers by protecting cows. We shall not be losers. My special request is that you should protect as many cows as possible. May Krishna bless this endeavor. May Krishna give more facilities to advance the cause of Vrindavan. I'm very proud of our farm's cow protection. If you just, these, these statements, probably not saying I'm very proud of it, but if you look at these statements, that was the sentiment I could see tied them all together. You like our Christian cows movement? You know how we've been here in America? We're giving protection to the cows. You can see Prabhupada, and Prabhupada's pride in this. And again, you'll be pleased to learn that along with the right Christian movement in the foreign countries, we're taking care of cow protection very vigorously. We have practical experience. We're giving proper protection to cows and receive more than enough milk. And one farm is producing more milk and, and they're selling. They range so nice, big tank, France, New Orleans, Philadelphia. We've got four or five. You'll be very much pleased that in a country where Gohatcha is prominent, we've established so many farms. This was my dream. This was my dream. That the place should be where we can get all nice foods, best of foods, milk, Christians fulfilling our desire. My one lamentation, this is Prabhupada with Abhiram. This is Abhiram's recollection. I have no lamentation, Prabhupada said. He paused for a few seconds. I have one lamentation. You haven't finished the Bhagavatam? No, I haven't established Varnashram. 50% of my work is not complete. But remember, Varnashram equals cow protection. This is Prabhupada on October 8th in 1977 saying the same thing. This is a quote on record. You almost get the sense that Prabhupada saying the one thing he didn't do, the one legacy he had left. I want to introduce this. I've given you ideas. You could do it. You're all intelligent. Attached to every temple, we're opening farms. We want a farm, a temple, and agriculture. A temple, a goshal, and agriculture. The farm will give food to the temple. Protect cows, grow crops, and provide something for your temples. Supply ghee to your centers. This should be done. Every center must have a farm. That's the GBC for Atlanta, 1976. Every temple must have a farm. From the very beginning, I was asking. Farm to restaurants, they go together. They're co-relative. Keep as many cows as possible. It's approved by me. We're going to make a new type of civilization. It's a new type of civilization. We're trying to introduce for the benefit of human society. If you organize in this way, your whole country will be transferred to Christian conscious country, the whole country. So, we got to drink milk, but we condemn the commercial dairy industry. So what do we do? We start farms, we protect cows, and those farms provide milk to the cities. That was Prabhupada's program. You got the $64,000 question of Varnashram. For Prabhupada, Varnashram equals farms, farm equals cow protections, Varnashram equals cow protections. At least we can take a first step in the right direction. The European leaders met about this. They voted, get better milk, 64%. Completely avoid milk and dairy from unprotected cows, 23%. Reduce our milk consumption generally, 13%. And just continue the way we are, 0%. That's what they voted. They also made a statement. We commit ourselves to a future when ISCON self-sustaining communities <coughs> and slaughter-free farms able to provide the milk requirements of our ISKCON communities. Our preference will always be lack of vegetarian in accordance with the teachings of Prabhupada, 
Until such a time as cow protection, milk is available, will serve this lack of vegetarian preference in the following ways. And that's what they voted. 25%. Yeah. No milk from unprotected cows. 13% reduced consumption. 64% find better quality milk. I collapsed a couple of these categories out. I really only see there be two, that there are two options. In light of the statements by Prop 1, I only see two options. Option A, figure out a way to protect cows ASAP. In the meantime, consume a minimal amount of the best dairy available to you and don't buy commercial ice cream, sour cream, yogurt, cheese, etc. There's some kind of an idea in ISCOM that if you want to, if you believe in cow protection, you should eat pizza and ice cream. So if you're not into pizza and ice cream, you're somehow like against the cow. There's also this idea that the cows benefit because we offer their milk. I couldn't find that argument for problem. I never once found Prophet say that anywhere, or even anything remotely resembling that. He did say if you offer fruits and flowers, the trees will benefit. But fruits and flowers naturally producing, fruits and flowers naturally produced from trees is much different than what's being done to the animals. Prophet never made that argument. And you know, if you really want to kind of think that argument through, it's like somebody keeps a woman captive and she makes some beautiful art and then her children are born, they're forced into that same process, and her male children are all slaughtered, and you buy that art, and that perpetuates the whole system. I mean, you don't buy things, like you don't buy, you know, blood diamonds. You don't buy stuff produced by child labor. The whole world understands this stuff. And the same principle applies to milk. So there's really, there's two, so, so Prabhupada said no sour cream, no ice cream, Yogurt has to be made. So, like the, all these ideas, there has to be a voluntary austerity measure, which is what's been done by society every time there's some kind of situation of a, a real, like a real problem. People engage in voluntary austerity. Prabhupada said you only need to drink one cup of milk a day. In New Rindal, two Kirinananda. Kirinananda saying no more, more Prabhupada said no, not more. One or two cups of milk a day. He said multiple places. Maximum two cups, minimum one cup, not so much need for paneer. He liked paneer for preaching, but when he was speaking to the devotees, one cup of milk a day is what you need. To fulfill Prabhupada's injunction to drink milk, one cup of milk a day. And Prabhupada said, no sour cream, no cream cheese, ice cream, only if you make it yourself. So, reducing the consumption of dairy, I think, is just the only reasonable response at a minimum of devotees. Reducing consumption of dairy. And so rather than seeing reducing consumption of dairy as a third category and sourcing better quality of milk, I put those together. So, you figure out a way to protect cows. In the meantime, consume minimal dairy and don't buy the commercial stuff. And I'm not even talking about your temple, although I am. I'm saying you guys as leaders have to do this. What else are you going to do with these instructions? This massive body of evidence for problems. ISCON in 77 was doing a lot of cow protection. Hundreds of gallons of milk were going to New York, probably toward the facilities. It was like an amazing revolution was taking place. And we've gone backwards since 1977. Prabhupada moved forward huge amounts towards implementing this, and we've just stopped. So, number one, get the best milk you can, drink a small amount, perform some austerity. Number two, figure out a way to protect cows. In the meantime, decide after 36 years of not being able to implement Prabhupada's final orders with regard to cow protection, that we've lost whatever limited dispensation Prabhupada may have given us to consume commercial dairy. And therefore, stop taking all commercial dairy products right away. I think that's the other option. And 25% of the Euro GBCs would have So, the next question is implementation. That's it, the slideshow's done. The next question is implementation. I, as far as I can see, there's some kind of massive disconnect between ISCON and commercial dairy consumption. We just don't think about it too much. And we try not to get too many arguments with vegans or like 
animal rights activists and just kind of go along and eat pizza and ice cream and don't think about it and tell ourselves that we're helping the cows and just kind of ignore this massive body of evidence. And it's a problem. And we're losing ground. Lack of vegetarian used to mean you're at the cutting edge. It doesn't mean that anymore. There's another problem, which is that meat, it, you know, it looks like meat. Commercial dairy looks kind of like devotee dairy. You have to actually embrace a new ethos to make a distinction between store-bought milk and milk coming from protected animals. It's not like, one's not red and one's white. One's kind of a beautiful yellowish color and the other one's like a white pasty color. But you have to, you have to actually think about it. You have to make a principled decision based on integrity and based on a higher understanding of life and based on thinking things through to make that distinction. So it's harder to do. It's very easy to just go grab some milk and not think about it. So anyway, in Laguna Beach, what we did was I stopped drinking any outside dairy, except for I took one drop every day so that I would fulfill Prabhupada's mandate to touch milk. And we continued offering the highest quality dairy we could to our deities. And we went through some voluntary austerities. We stopped making massive curd feasts. We stopped buying cheese from outside, sour cream. And rather than you know, me becoming some kind of a carmy vegan, the result was we started protecting the first cows in the history of Southern California a few years ago. And we started offering that milk to the deities, and our temple got involved. And it used to be we'd make milk, and that milk from the evening offering would get thrown away oftentimes. I don't know if that's ever happened in your temple. How many of you have thrown away milk because nobody drank from the evening offerings? It used to happen to us. And somebody get the butter, and you put the butter on the chapatis, you get that piece of butter with all the chapati flecks on it, and you're kind of like, ah, you throw it away, start with a new one. Since we started protecting cows, not one drop of milk is wasted in our temple. Every single thing which is brought from those cows is prepared for the deities, is consumed by the devotees of the congregation. It's considered to be very, very special. And sometimes when the devotees are taking dairy, they begin crying because they feel so connected to those animals. And there's a fruit of living a life of integrity. And we can actually speak about it. And when we speak, people listen. So I see there's two options, and I don't really think the implement. I think that the ISKCON devotees are brilliant, and that if we decide as a group or individually we want to protect cows, all of North America can be off the dairy grid in one year. I think the problem we have is a theological one. I think that people don't actually get what Prabhupada said and the implications of it, they haven't thought through it sufficiently, and so what I want to do is I want to at least put that framework down on paper for all of you to look at. Once that's done, once we accept this as our mandate, it's just like everything else in the world. We, we worship deities, and our deity worship takes 25 to 30 hours a day in Laguna Beach, and we're a small temple. I'm assuming a big temple is more like 40 or 50 hours a day. If you decide you're going to protect cows daily. 40 hours a day. I'm assuming for a big temple it's 40 or 50 hours. In our small, man hours. In our small temple it's 25 or 30 hours a day. Five people on the altar. I'm talking about man hours per day. I'm a manager. Including cooking. So I, I think in terms of man hours. So I say, how long is that going to take? I think a man hour. So I have three people doing eight hours, it's 24 hours. If I have six people doing four hours, it's still 24 hours. If I have 10 people doing 2.4 hours, four hours, it's still 24 hours. If I work 24 hours straight, it's still 24 hours. So it takes us in Laguna Beach to worship our deities, cook for them, clean for them, serve them, do the RTs, dress them, wash the stuff we dress them with, wash the clothing, put the clothing out, take clothing away, wipe down the jar 25 to 30 hours. Every single day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for the last 30 plus years. And I'm assuming you guys are all like that as well. Cow protection doesn't take that long. You just have to decide we have to do this. You start deciding you have to do it, and all of a sudden you become a genius. Tushta has got a local farmer that he works with. He protects a cow, keeps the cow, gives them the milk. That farmer's agreed never to kill the cow. They've also got animal sanctuaries as a backup. So they can always take the cow to an animal sanctuary. They could also ship the cow off to Keaton Ottery or New Vrindavan and pay for them to take care of it. But he's got an animal, he's doing cow protection. He started from scratch. Even if the worst case happens and the farmer goes crazy and kills the cow, it's a fraction of what happens when you go to a place and buy milk. It's such an improvement. And we learn from the story regarding the hunter 
that in our moral theory, in our deontology, that if you do less harm, it's actually an improvement. Because now when you told Mergari, if you just kill the animal, don't torture it, it's a step forward. And that was me in Mergari's spiritual life. And so the next thing that'll happen is Tush took a little piece of land, something small, a hobby farm, an acre, a half an acre, move a family out there. They'll take over that cow potential, grow a little garden, and it'll grow from there. You've got to eat an otter, which is producing 300 gallons a week, that they'll sell you. They could provide the entire northeast quadrant with milk. San Diego and Laguna Beach got together, and we're doing cow protection, and it's provided for both our temples. And it's going to be much more so in the immediate future. So Vosper, we could get in on that also if he wanted to. We talked about that. We could do something. All of Southern California could be supplied by that farm. What we can do is we can get the farms. We can locate them. What cities they're close to. You can ship milk. I shipped milk for two years from Tripurari Swami's farm. So we could offer cruelty-free milk. For two years. It cost us 20 bucks a gallon. We did it. I finally got so sick of doing that, we started cow protection locally. It works. You just got to start. And once you start, you don't stop. Just like everything else we do in our life, from chanting our java, to offering our food, to worshiping deities, to carrying on programs. It's just management. We just have to make a decision. We have to do it. And with the ingenious devotees of this kind, using a variety of like innovative things, in one year we can be off the dairy group, we can hold our head up high, and we can fix this massive gap in following Prabhupada's last instructions his one lamentation, his final order, 